Welcome to Jurassic Reviews. On this episode, we'll be taking a break from reviewing Kenner's first Jurassic Park line to take a look at something new from Mattel. I plan on doing this every once in a while to mix things up, and just because I think Mattel has done an amazing job with the Jurassic Park license after Hasbro fumbled it with their awful Jurassic World line. These figures are worth talking about. Mattel, of course, took over the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World license in 2017 after Hasbro had been the license holder since 1992. Mattel's line has been a hit with fans so far, both in terms of their quality and variety. And while they have had a good amount of repaints already, they also continue to introduce new dinosaurs and humans as the line continues. It really feels like they're continuing where Kenner left off. This episode features a dinosaur that is new to Jurassic Toys, the Albertosaurus. As soon as I saw early pictures of this dinosaur, I knew I wanted it. I love when they add dinosaurs that were not in the movies, as I think it forces whoever's making them to get creative. And again, I also love the variety. It also helps that this sculpt is great. It really stands out among the many other awesome releases by Mattel. Let's take a closer look at it. First, let's take a look at its box. Here it is from the front. And here it is from the back. It's part of the Dino Rivals line, Mattel's second line. It stands about 6.5 inches tall and is just about 14 inches long from head to tail. So it's similar in size to the Action Attack Dinosaurs and the Mega Dull Attack Dinosaurs in Mattel's lines, which basically means it fits in with the medium-sized dinosaurs in the line. Here's a size comparison. This is it next to the Kenner 4-inch human and Mattel's 3 and 3 quarter scale human. Here it is next to the Mattel's Velociraptor. Here it is next to the Suchomimus. And finally here it is next to the Thrash and Throw T-Rex by Mattel. The sculpt on this Albertosaurus is really great, especially its head. This is one of the best head sculpts in any Jurassic line. There's a good amount of detail here. I love all the little scales and how the back of its head gets spiky little bumps that continue on down the rest of its body. It also has orange eyes, which is odd, but they really stick out on it. The rest of the sculpt is filled with scales, bumps, and other details. It's all really well done. As stated by many other collectors, the tail is on the short side. Probably one of my only problems with this figure, just wish it were a little bit longer. But I can definitely forget that. As far as the paint job, it's pretty good. Nothing too crazy though. The purple on its head sticks out, though it sort of just dies off after its neck. It uses a white paint under its jaw, and its mouth is a really, really pink color. The only other different paint besides its red wound and orange eyes are its black painted toenails. Interestingly, these nails were painted, but the fingers were not. So yeah, overall pretty solid. My only problem with the paint is the bloody scratch marks on its leg. I feel like the battle damage gimmick is enough. I never really liked any Jurassic Park figure having the permanent damage exposed. I always felt being able to conceal it was the way to go. Speaking of battle damage, this Albertosaurus does have a concealable wound. This is actually one of the crazier versions of Dino damage, or battle damage as it's called now. It actually has two layers to it. One layer showing its ribs, and another that allows you to move the ribs exposing softer guts underneath. It's a pretty cool variation of this feature. I like that they tried something different with it. In terms of articulation, its head almost feels like it's on a ball joint. It can move all different directions, including like all the way around. And its jaw can open, though it's a little difficult on mine. I just want to mention that I love that you can have the mouth opened or closed. There's a few figures out there that don't allow you to have much of a choice there. Its arms can move back and forth, and its legs can move in and out, and sort of snap and lock to different positions going back and forth. There's basically three stances it can have. The foot of the Albertosaurus can rotate, though it looks a little odd when the sculpt no longer lines up correctly. Its tail can also move, but for some reason I can't get a ton of movement out of it. Not sure if it's just mine or they're all like this. As far as this figure standing, it's okay. It stands just fine, but it definitely wouldn't take much to knock it over. At least that's how mine feels. Really, it's just moving the legs in and out that can cause problems. Otherwise, it'll hold its positions. Normally, I've been talking about rarity with my Kenner Series 1 reviews, but this doesn't really apply here yet. It currently retails at Walmart for $19.99 and is starting to become easier to track down. 
Well, except in territories outside the US. I will say that since it's a Walmart exclusive and seems to be turning into a fan favorite, that it could end up being a highly sought after figure down the line. And depending on how long it's on the shelves, it could end up being a pretty rare figure, if past Jurassic Park toys that were exclusive to specific stores or anything to go by. Time will tell, but I wouldn't wait on trying to pick this one up. My rating for this figure is a 9 out of 10. This is a top 5 Mattel Jurassic World figure for me so far, and I really hope they continue to dish out figures of this quality. These figures really are in good hands with Mattel. That said, really the only two things holding it back a little bit for me were the tail and the slash marks on it. It's a home run otherwise. And that does it for Mattel's Abertosaurus. We'll pick up where we left off with the Kenner Series 1 line in the next episode, but this won't be the last time we take a look at something out of order. I also will be introducing episodes revealing Godzilla figures, so if you happen to be into Godzilla or have a passing interest about Godzilla, feel free to check them out. But don't worry, the Jurassic Park episodes won't be slowing down. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.